All right, uh, hello everyone, and welcome to G-Man's uh, first edition of the Summer Spectacular Sweepdown. Uh, this will be the round of 32 reactions, plus the plan, I'll have a little segment on that. Uh, and we're going to break it down, what we just witnessed, uh, a bunch of storylines that we now know uh, following the round, and what we could look forward to um, in the future of the tournament, and maybe even beyond. So... Here's the rundown. We're going to mention the play in. Then we're going to recap a bunch of the non headline matches. Just go through the round. We talk about what happened in each match and whatnot. See how people are doing. What I feel like could happen in the future. Then we're going to narrow in on the uh, TJ versus Yepa. is controversial ending that happened. We're going to discuss a little bit about that. Uh, then after that, we're going to go to the uh, Fitzwater defeat and what his future is. Because I'm going to be honest, it's not looking bright right now. And then. Probably the biggest story coming out of the first round, just the three lines collapse in the Super League bubble and how it's getting affected by that. Um, and then we're going to have uh, a segment I like to call G-Man's Regional Hot Takes. Uh, I'll give a hot take for each region and I'll explain the meaning behind it. And I'll give a uh, preview and a rundown for the Super 16. So without further ado, let's get started with just a quick mention of the play-in. So, we have a Costa vs. Yepes. Uh, this did happen a while ago, however, I do want to mention it in case anyone did not, uh, was not here for it or didn't really pay much attention to it. Um, it was a blazing start to the tournament. Probably one of the best uh, matches of the tournament so far, I will say. Um, it was the first game I refed, personally, um, in uh, MRE or no. But I've got to say, um, the, the expectations were not high going into it. But it ended up being where it was a really good match. Um, ended up being 2-2 on the game 5. And um, Yepes was down 19 cards at one point. And after this screenshot, actually, uh, Acosta called Uno. Um, and Yepes called a wild red to ice that. So th that could have been it right there for Yepes. But Yepes brought it back. And uh, he was able to pull it off and was able to win the play. And both players look really solid. I think they're both looking... So, and, like, they both build pretty good resumes. Uh, it has probably a little more because he had more games to play, but I don't think Acosta did too bad. I think Acosta set himself nicely up for T4. Now, in terms of Super League, it's probably not a great setup, of course, but it's going to take a lot for either of these guys to get into the Super League, but I do believe both do have the capabilities of doing it, but they will have to do a lot, especially since they debuted in Tournament 3. But... I uh, just want to give a quick mention about that game in case you didn't see it. Uh, and then we'll now jump into the uh, first round action. So we're going to break this down by region by region. Um, we're going to start with the East region. Cat matters. We're not really going to talk about much. We're going to start with Aiden Smith and uh, Brian N, a 4 5. Uh, Aiden Smith, uh, this was originally the last match of the round, but we were able to get one more match in, which we'll talk about later. But uh, yeah, Aiden Smith just. He played the cards right. I don't really have much I could say about this game. Just Brian couldn't get things going. And Aiden was just running the table. Uh, definitely showing up more in the fight than he did in April. Uh, and he's definitely needing that. Especially since his next opponent is going to be uh, TJ Smith. Reigning champion of the uh, MRE Uno League. So, or at least the tournaments. Uh, but, yeah. He's really um, showed a really good fight. Sh showed, showed to be impressive. And, uh... We'll see what happens. Uh, the, obviously, not favored going into TJ Smith, but you never know. Uh, in Smith, not looking too bad, but he might need to bring a little more if he wants to uh, make it further. And then, Area uh, Carmona just takes business. No, nothing more than that, but Zach uh, does have his best uh, match, of the, match of this league so far. Takes two games from Carmona after going down, I believe, 3-0. Um, put Aria um, on the ropes for a bit, but Aria was able to close things out. Zach looks a little better. Uh, still 0-3, still in a very bad spot. Is probably in a must-win situation to get into Super League at this point, but who knows? Uh, showed some improvement here, and maybe he can get that uh, looming match win uh, that has... Uh, it's pretty much just evaded him for these first three tournaments. Uh, and then we're going to move on to the South region here. Uh, we have three matches, actually, we could talk about here. Uh, we're going to start with uh, KT, Christian Tech out. Uh, 
KT uh, just uh, did mention that he uh, was away in Asia and becomes the first player to win an Emory Uno game or tournament in or not tournament uh, match in two different continents. Uh, the significance of that uh, is up to you, uh, but yeah, uh, he just kind of warmed up. I don't know. Tikot really gave nothing, which I was surprising. I thought he would give a little more, but Tikot just didn't really show up. He just kind of was there kind of disappointing i'm gonna be honest uh but expectations weren't too high anyway so i, w I wouldn't i say this one's by far she didn't really have a ton of high expectations i thought he would have done a little better but it is what it is but in terms of disappointing oh man uh sanford stepped up and double who was coming in as number 14 in, in the super league projections he had nothing. I, one of the biggest disappointments of the round for me, in my opinion, was uh, doubled. He did not show any potential or prowess uh, in winning this match, and it was really disappointing. I was expecting a lot more out of doubled. Uh, he's probably dropping out of the Super League projections. Um, I did. We did say that uh, in the write-ups uh, for the Super League reveal show we did a while back. That he was either going to move up or he was going to drop out, and it's looking like the latter is going to happen. So, quite unfortunate. We'll see if he can rebound in tournament four. But yeah, that that's a momentum killer right there. Really disappointing. And then Garza had the uh, unfortunate situation where I believe he got his Discord hacked, which caused him to be unable to participate in the tournament, and that ended up in uh, Turner getting a DQ win. So now he is. One match away from making his third electric eight or elite eight whatever you want to call it um which would be impressive and helps his resume a lot uh showing himself as uh mr consistent but yeah uh again there's not much to say except hopefully garza gets his account back really hate to see something like that happen but it is what it is and now we're gonna move on to the west here um again we got another three matches uh g-man versus bradley ream uh i mean I'll, I'll talk in third person, but uh, G-Man just, he played his game. That's kind of all there is. Reem did take an important step, though. Reem does take his uh, first Un MRE Uno game uh, so far after getting swept in the play-in uh, last tournament. Uh, it, it was still not close. It was not a great not a great match, but uh, Reem does take that important step, to, does get the 4-1. And also, uh, while I'm saying that, um, no one got sweeped in the first round, which is very surprising, especially since we had 15 matches, 16 if you want to include the uh, play-in. Um, but yeah, that was really shocking. We had a uh, at least one sweep in the first round in previous two tournaments, but no sweep this time. We had 32 people. We had 33 people. So uh, as KT said, it, um, Matt, the competitive quality is getting up higher and. I have to agree. Uh, not really getting any sweeps. We'll, we're not sure if there will be any sweeps, though, in the next rounds. Because, you know, last tournament we did end on a 7-0 sweep. But we'll see what happens. Uh, and, oh, man, this match. Uh, I mean, I wrote it down like this. Clint brings the smokes. Uh, Rogers brings the steam. Rogers was very, very not happy following his match against Clint. Uh, unfortunately didn't play the best and i think it kind of got to him clint just kind of was clint and was able to hang on now he uh, faces g-man in the uh, super 16 looking to uh, make a name for himself there a win there would be huge but yeah rogers uh, coming in was uh, number 13 in the super league definitely said he was uh upset following the following the game probably not in a good spot at the super league after that and i kind of agree but We'll have to see what happens in the future, but yeah, not a great tournament for Rogers here. He's going to have to uh, wait for the next tournament to see if he can get a recovery. And then uh, Cody Lamas and DJ Curtis. Uh, Lamas was able to hold on. Curtis just fell short of the 2-7 upset, but I'm going to be honest here and just say this game did not feel like it went to Game 7. I'm sorry. It really didn't. It felt like Lamas was just kind of doing his own thing. He was in control most of the time. Curtis was just kind of along for the ride, and... I don't know. I, I, I saw Game 7 happen. It was like, I never thought it was game... I never felt like it was Game 7. It just felt like Lama's just doing his thing. Just maybe Game 5, Game 6, something like that. It, it never felt like Game 7. Lama's just felt like he was in control. And I don't know. That's just the feeling I got from it. I just didn't feel like this was a Game 7. And just kind of... 
that's kind of how it went and mom was just kind of pretty simply took it and finally we're gonna go to the midwest uh, i believe we have uh, three matches here yeah uh we're gonna start with dagby and play wolf uh Dagby, Dagby just played it cool. Um, he didn't have it as explosive of a, of a start as he did in April, uh, where he just swept everyone. Uh, but he does leave uh, lead out with a 4-2 here. Uh, it was 2-1 at one point, so he did make a slight comeback. But Clay does leave a pretty good impression. Um, as he, he played pretty well. Unfortunately, sometimes there's not much you can do as an 8th seed when you're going up against the 1. But Clay definitely did put the work in, uh, did what he could, and hopefully we'll see him back next tournament. I think he could do some stuff uh, in the future, but we'll have to see um, what happens with that. And we got Monkey and Ziemba. Uh I mean, Monk, uh, this was, yeah, I, I don't know. This was something. Uh, I guess I probably should have mentioned it also. Um uh, we're, we're coming up on my match of the round, um, but uh, in terms of worst match of the round, um, it, it was th this was this was a contender. I'll say that much. My my personal worst match of the round was Clint Rogers, but I already we'd already discussed that. I forgot to mention that actually. I apologize, but still, this was not not great. And the fact that it went to game seven also just kind of made it prolonged. Monkey was able to stay alive, play his cards right, but. Oh man, Ziemba, a lot of very eyebrow raising errors there. Um, was coming in as someone who thought was thought could make a run, but no, just proved a lot of people wrong. And wow, that's all I have to say. I'm just shocked. Hopefully Ziemba comes back and uh, fixes whatever happened in that game because that that was not good, not good at all. I be I believe he was. Uh, ranked to be the worst of uh, the people who got to game seven uh but yeah but then i said it before but we were coming up on my match of the round and that is uh peter on and mac johnson and i mean what a fight this was um it's on they just went they just went wire the wire um there was points where people thought mac johnson was going to pull off the upset i'm pretty sure game seven it was double uno at one point so things were getting kind of crazy and the 2-7 could have happened, and Peter could have had another early exit, but nope. Peter hangs on, shows that he is able to hang on these 10 situations as a uh, former champion, the March champion. Uh, we'll have to see how much further he goes here, hoping he could build up and recover from the early April exit, but... Yeah, this was a great this was a uh, great match, and I think Mac really showed himself as a person to... Uh, person to worry about like showed himself as a threat um def probably not in probably not in the super league bubble right now but he's definitely someone who could spoil it i will say that and that's gonna be uh the recap and now we're gonna go into the specific matches here so tj smith and yepes i mean that's all i could say what could have been uh so TJ was projected to win 4-0 against either Costa or Yepes, whoever won that play-in. Yepes was the one who ended up winning the play-in. Um, it was projected 4-0. Uh, TJ does win, but it was it was nowhere near a 4-0. At the points, there was concern that TJ might even lose in the first round, and then we'd have to start discussing of whether or not there's a champion's curse uh, with Anjak uh, losing in his first round um, last tournament as well, but. Yeah, it's it was it was tense. It was very tense. Um, and the first the original game seven was a very was very scary. There was a lot of unos that could have gone very wrong for TJ. He did hang in there, but I mean, I, you have to think, how did he get in that spot? I mean, game two, he said he was trolling, and I don't know. It's in the call he was saying his hands and whatnot to Yepes. And I really don't know what was going on there. Uh, really, really a normal, strange, uh, strange strategy there. Uh, he lost. He lost that second game, and then he just dropped another two. And it's just, I, I'm not sure what happened there. Uh, but that's not really what people are talking about. The people, the thing that <coughs> people are going to talk about, and it, everyone is going to talk about for a long time, is what happened in Game Seven. Yepes uh, ended up disconnecting due to the activity because uh, his internet uh, cut out, and 
That was a very, very strange situation. We've never seen anything like it before. And this was Game 7. This was uh, all or nothing here. And this was a very tight game. This was 3-3. Three, three, um, and it was a very weird situation. Uh, the officials ended up deciding to restart it, um, which both players did agree to. If both players didn't agree to it, I think uh, TJ would have been given the win, but still. Um, so the game was restarted, but... Yeah, that was a very strange situation. Um, I know I was part of that discussion, but I think in the future, um, what should happen with that is if the person uh, disconnects, I feel like the person who disconnects should be not... Uh, the person who doesn't disconnect, I should say, should be more in the, the driver's seat, I guess. Um, uh, I would say, at worst, it's a forfeit of the game, and at best, it's just a restart. I feel like it's just kind of like whatever the... Uh, pursuit doesn't disconnect decides in the end i feel like that's just what's gonna have to be because that's not fair to uh the person who didn't disconnect if they have if they were forced to do something that they feel might be unfair or something like that but yeah in the end um the real in the real game seven um wow what in the actual fuck was tj's hand i we have this image here uh pretty much explains what happened uh Yepes wasn't really about to win Game 7, it just makes the image better, but uh, TJ draws the holy mother of all hands, gets four wild plus fours in a row, makes Yepes draw 16 cards, and just wins the game like that, and I, I, I don't even know what happened there, that was one of the most insane hands I've ever seen in my entire life. And I think, I guess in a way it did work out, um, where TJ, who did not disconnect, does get granted a little luck there. But, I mean, yeah. Uh, in the end, it ends up 4-3, uh, TJ moving on. But what does what does it mean for Yepes? Uh, honestly, for Yepes, I think it helps him a lot. I think he was the best of the people who got the Game 7, despite the disconnect issue and despite a few issues with the play he really did he really shined in some areas and i really think he could do something in the next tournament with a better seating which he probably will get but i, I don't know it's just it's gonna depend on some things and it's gonna depend on how much of this momentum can you keep uh going forward um but i think the more important question is what does this mean for tj smith and in the future because he very nearly he very nearly lost this game. I'm gonna say that right now. He very nearly lost this match. It could have happened. There were points where it could have happened, and troll or not, the, the the possibility became very real once it was once it was three two Yepes. Um, so I'm not sure what this means for TJ. I don't think he's uh, showing himself as strong as uh, people might be thinking he is. Um, still a very good player, but is he really going to go back to back? I'm not sure. And I think this also plays in because he's really playing uh, downplaying this. And I also want to bring this point up TJ Smith, tribal chief mentality. So if, for those of you who don't know, um, the tribal chief is, um, a nickname for the current, uh, undisputed WWE Universal Champion Roman Reigns who has a 1,000 day reign and has an entire family called the Bloodline which uh, supports him and whatnot and he is a um, selfish egotistical um, champion so he think uh, he believe uh, he believes he's the best he believes there's no one else better than him and whatnot so TJ has definitely taken inspiration of this um, based on his gifts, based on his uh, post-match interviews. And my question is, how does this affect him? Especially with um, if you compare it to what's actually going on, because that, that faction, uh, his empire is uh, falling apart. So my question is, um, is TJ's empire of dominance falling apart and he's just refusing to recognize it? And I think that's going to be the most interesting thing to look at going forward as he goes against Aiden Smith in the Super 16. Uh, we're gonna move on to this next match. Uh, we got uh, this was easily the most anticipated match of the round. Uh, it it did not fail to deliver, but I think it could have been better. Uh, but Caesar just smoked Fitzwater. Um, that's what it is. It was four one. Uh, the yeah, it, this match had history, 
the press conference was uh, unfortunately not as good as we were hoping. They kept it for the game, but the game did deliver. But Caesar just ran away with it. I, I, I don't know what else to say. Caesar just ran, up, what, ran away with it. Fitzroy played all right, but it was nothing compared to Caesar. Caesar just had him um, in the palm of his hand. And it's, it's great for Caesar, but you have to wonder about Fitzwater because coming into the tournament, people were wondering what was going on with Fitzwater because this is now his third consecutive early exit, and this is the first time he has failed to make it out of the first round. Um, technically, in the last tournament, he made, got out of his first match, but technically the play-in was the first round. This this was just the, basically the first round, so this is the first time Fitzwater uh, bows out in round one, and this is easily his worst placing yet. And this down spiral of Fitzwater is just continuing. I, I don't know. When does the free fall stop? I don't know. It's, I it's kept going and going and going. And it's sort of unfortunate to see. We know Fitzwater is a legend in this game. We know he has a lot of history with the game. He did start as the number one seed uh, going into March. But now, I don't. we're not even sure if he's going to be in the top 15 for the Super League. Let alone, he's already probably going to be not in the top 10. He's probably going to be on the outside looking in. But is he even going to be ranked? I don't even know. It's just really unfortunate. We don't really know what's going on with Fitzwater. But he needs to, if we need, if we want to see Fitzwater in the Super League, or even in the rankings, he might not even be in the rankings. It's, he's got to, we got to, he's got to figure it out. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen in Tournament 4 and Tournament 5, but not looking good but another uh another point i want to point out uh caesar definitely is someone who has a lot of words so my question is how many people is caesar going to end up pissing off uh because in my opinion the further caesar makes it in this tournament the more enemies he's going to make which i think might come to bite him in the ass uh when it comes to later tournaments uh and a lot of heated feuds um you can see here uh he's uh he mentioned that tj was on fraud alert and he's also um exchanging a lot of words with uh eli so in the end of it, it's like t5 and caesar is not really in a good spot to make it in he's on the bubble and he's against one of these people he's feuding with um we might have a once in a lifetime situation where it's gonna be very heated and it's gonna be a very very interesting match but now here is the biggest storyline coming out of the first round. The entire three line just disintegrates. Like what the actual fuck happened? I mean, th this was unprecedented. Absolutely. I mean, a six over a three happening? Probably not. It probably was going to happen, but the entire three line out in the first round what no one saw this coming no one can tell me that they predicted this it, it, no one saw this coming it, it's genuinely unbelievable like we have the, se the seven and eight lines are all done but those were like probably expected the three line no there's no way and I still can't believe it either. I don't even know if we'll ever see something like this again. Just, there, there, you could write an essay about the unbelievable collapse that happened with all four of these players in this line. It is genuinely unbelievable. And the worst part is, the three line is where the Super League bubble is. So that causes a huge issue with the cut line right now. Because eighth. And 10th through 14th all crashed out in the first round. So here's the Super League table coming into June. Um, just if you need to remember it. T. J. Smith, G. Man, K. T. Ryan Dagby. We, we we don't need to know about that. The, the, lot, the top seven all made it through this first round. Uh, rel uh, relatively unscathed. Some some less than others, but. Eli was definitely someone who just jumped into the top 10 might fall right out of it area does survive That's actually she actually might uh, Jump up and go even further. She can make it a far run, but then Fitzwater dark rain Sean Ard, Austin Rogers doubled all out in the first round and some of them I'm gonna be honest really did not show up at all monkey though at 15th does make it through the first round and that's huge for him he could he could uh leapfrog all those guys 
um and that that's huge it, that's huge that's all i gotta say that's huge yeah and those are your winners and even people who are not ranked like those people who might be close in smith couldn't be even that helps them too if they make it far they're leapfrogging probably all those guys because none of them are getting better records a lot of them are now one in three maybe even worse it's it's unbelievable um and that entire three line collapsing and even the people who weren't on a three line falling out it was just, it's unbelievable it's one of the most unbelievable collapses probably ever in this tournament i don't think we're going to ever see something like this again um but the three things we got you gotta keep going forward and especially if you're on this cut line three things you gotta be looking at going forward one is don't sabotage your game which you saw in eli versus uh very gold where eli tried to go for the cody llama strat and unfortunately uh what he forgot was the only person who could do the cody llama strat is cody llamas uh and that actually cost him and you, you don't sabotage your own game that's one of the most important things you're beating yourself up another thing is you have to be versatile dark we know he's gone for long he goes for long games but he's some when it's a short game it feels like he's just has no answers he needs to you need to be versatile with your games you need to be able to play fast and you need to be able to play long and unfortunately for dark um his downfall was just not being able to keep up with the quick pace and then finally, just simply don't miss key moments. Sean Ard right here has a blue eight and could call and calls Uno. He could call a power play here and win the game. His last card was blue zero, chooses not to, and that cost him the game and what would eventually cost him to set in a, in a disappointing 4-2 loss. Just can't miss moments like that. And even he missed a call out that could have saved the game. You just can't miss moments like that if you're on this cut line. It's the difference between making it through and making it out. And if you're missing moments like that, that's going to be the difference between being above the cut line and being below the cut line. That's all I got to say on that. All right. Uh, now we're going to move on to the, my segment called G-Man's Regional Hot Takes. So, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take each region and I'm going to give you a hot take that I have about it and to explain to you why I feel that way. So, and so let's just start in the order of the bracket. Let's start in the East. I did tease at this before, but for the East region, my hot take is that the regional winner is more wide open than people are projecting. A lot of people were projecting that TJ Smith was going to walk through this region and nothing more. And you know what? At the start of this, at the start of this tournament, before it started, I was kind of, I was kind of thinking that too. But I saw through the first round, TJ barely walked out of that first round game. He did have that insane hand game seven, but it was still close. It still could have been a loss. I, it's, it's not looking. It's not as wide open. It's more wide open. It's not as close, uh, close shot of as people think. I think Area actually might win this region now. I think Very Gold has a good shot of winning the region. Tell even Aiden Smith, I think, has a fair shot. Does he have a great shot? Probably not, but I would give him a better shot than I would have at the start of the tournament. Um, but I think the region is more open. That's my hot take for the East. Now we're gonna move on to my hot take for the West. Uh, not the West, the uh, South. Um, and my South regional hot take is that Julius Caesar should actually be the favorite to make the Final Four in that region. Now, I feel like a lot of people are going to go looking at KT to possibly make the Final Four, but I'm going to tell you the whole of your horses right there. Um, KT has said in the said before he's not at 100% right now, and especially with the jet lag uh, going on with being in Asia and just generally being stuck at his uh, 13 st card starts. Um, he, he's not at full strength right now, and I think that's going to cost him, especially when Caesar is at such an insane pace right now he destroyed his uh good close rival and friend uh Fitzroy in the first round as part of the three line collapse um he now he has jesse turner who did not even play in the first round they had a uh, he had a buy because uh, of a dq so we don't know how turner is going to end up being um i act i despite being a six seed i think caesar is actually the favorite to make the final four and win the region which sounds crazy but it, if you think about it more, it just makes more and more sense, especially to me. Um, 
So I would pick C's. If you're making picks for who wins each region or who uh, who makes it far, I would I would pick Caesar. I would. I just think he's gonna make it far, and I think everything is lining up in his favor. All right, and now for my West Regional hot take, I'm gonna say that out of all four players left, Klimpy is easily the scariest of the remaining four. Now. Some people might say it's because I'm playing Clint right now, and I'm going to tell you, hold your horses. This is something I've actually thought since the beginning of the tournament, and I actually would make the argument that Clint B is one of the, one of the scariest players to face. Is it because he is a fantastic, phenomenal player who could absolutely uh, get in your head and completely uh, outplay you with his cards? Absolutely not. But he's the scare one of the scariest players to fight for the reason that sometimes you genuinely do not know what's going on. And I did say this, I said this before to, I believe, Sanford uh, a while back. But the thing with Clint is he's going to have a lot of weed coming out of him. And if the weed gets in your head, then it's over. And that's the main key with uh, Clint. If you let it get, in, if you get, if he gets in your, if not even him, if the weed just gets in your head. You're going to lose everything. You're going to be too confused to even understand what's going on. And Clint's just going to take advantage of that. And with not even understanding what's happening, I think Clint's the scariest of the four people left in the region. I mean, you do have G-Man, who's probably marked as the favorite to win the region. But you don't know what happens. Clint, it's like an, it's like, uh, an RPG. You just don't know what's going to happen. There's crits. There's... Um, spells it's random dice rolls it's just you don't know what's gonna happen um and then on the other side it's Lamas who is also kind of random but if you if you have clint if you have clint upsetting g-man and then Lamas, then you have a completely random um west regional final and it's that's probably going to be one of the most chaotic matches of the tournament i'm just going to say that now and then Lamas is playing um yoshi awesome who we don't really know much about um, but again, it's the wild card factor um, of the newbie, so you never really know what's gonna happen. Lamas was a newbie last tournament; and he made a final four, so you don't know what's gonna happen to Yoshi. He could go out this round, or he could go and make a really deep run. We don't really know, and I think the West is the most um, unknown region right now, in my opinion. And then finally, we're gonna end it off with the Midwest. So my Midwest regional hot take is that Dagby might not make it past Monkey this time. Now, this is going to be our first rematch in the MRE Uno League. Um, and this is a rematch of last tournament in the first round where Dagby ended up sweeping Monkey 4-0? I believe it was 4-0. Um, and it, it wasn't good. And people thought Monkey was a fraud. Um, but I'm going to be honest, even though the history doesn't suggest it, I'm thinking the current and the present is uh, not looking favorable for Dagby. Dagby did not have the fiery explosive start he did in April, and I think that might me mean that Monkey is not getting swept this time. This and also Monkey, he's riding that momentum. He knows if he wins uh, against Dagby, he's going to have a huge advantage in the Super League, probably jumps into the top 10. Um, he's the biggest one who could benefit out of the uh, three-line collapse. Um, so... He's already motivated. He's going to be incredibly motivated to get this win or even uh, be super well and be super close. So I think I think the momentum of motivation as well as just how the tournament has started, I think it favors Monkey this time. And I think based on how he's been playing, I think Monkey might get revenge and beat Dagby. And that would be the first one seed to go down. And we'll have to see what happens, but... Yeah, I don't know. I feel I feel like Monkey might actually make it past Dagby this time, and I do think Dagby needs to watch out. So those are going to be my four regional hot takes. Let me know if you agree with them or not. But that'll be that'll be it for that. And then we're gonna wrap this up with a quick uh, look ahead to the Super Sixteen. So here's our matches. Here we got T.J. Smith versus Aiden Smith. We got the the Battle of the Smiths right there. Uh, Air, uh, Area versus Barry Gold, and that's the East. In the south, we got KT versus Sanford, Turner versus Caesar. Uh, in the uh, in the west, we got G Man versus Clint B, Co uh, Co Alamis, and then versus Yoshi. And then for the Midwest, we got Dagby versus Monkey and Peter versus Vapor. Um, so I'm not gonna make any predictions on who wins what here. 
Um, I know I did say that Monkey uh, Dagger Knight might not get past Monkey, but that's not a prediction. That's just a hot take. Um, so, uh, whatever predictions you believe are going to happen with who makes it through and whatnot, uh, let me know. But I'll give you my three keys uh, factors to watch out for heading into this round. And that's going to be, how does the additional power play affect matches? Who benefits from the longer series? And who has the best composure in tense card situations? And whatever the answers are to those three questions for each of these matches, I think will determine who ends up being the winner and moves on to uh, the regional finals. Um, so, yeah, we're going to wrap it up there. Thank you all so much for watching. I know this is probably a bit of a longer thing, and this is something new we're trying out. Um, but hopefully you did enjoy it. We're going to be doing this uh, for every round of this tournament and for future tournaments as well. So make sure you keep tuning in at the end of each round to get the recap and the uh, logistics on the storylines coming out of the round and possibly going into the next round. So thank you all for watching. Uh, this is G-Man, and I will see you when we come back and recap the uh, Super 16 in the June Summer Showdown.